Please welcome to the stage my father, Dr. Joel Wallach. This DJ is so funky, man. come. <laughs> okay, a couple of quick announcements. Um, when we're done here, I'm told from two to four, I'll be outside signing books and taking pictures with you. And then we're announcing a new set of, from the Osmond Productions, you know, Donnie Marie and Jimmy and the bunch. Now, this is a CD of my lecture, two-hour lecture, the DVD and the book called The Truth About Nutrition. You're going to start seeing this all over television. You get those things out. You're going to have more people to deal with and you know what to do. Okay, so these are available outside, and I'll sign them too. And then also Go Foods, 14 non GMO, organic, and gluten free uh, dishes. Hua! Okay, now we're going to go to work. <sighs> now, you, if you've been listening to my lectures for last year, you know that my passion is our kids. And experts tell us that our children are going to be the first generation of Americans that do not live as long as their parents. This is a catastrophic prediction of biblical proportions. We're talking about the Great Flood. We're talking about all of Egypt's firstborn dying because Pharaoh refused to release the Hebrew slaves. Can you imagine everybody in this room burying their children? This tells us how terribly the medical profession has failed us. And this is why Yongevity is here. And I love you because you're an army that's going to save our kids. God bless you for it. Hooah. Let's get started here. I've got a three-hour lecture to give in 30 minutes, so we're going to go fast. Let's see. Here we get started. And they told me there's a delay. Okay, there we go. You know me. All right. And so some of this, you can just read it. We're going to start out with longevity because we want our kids to outlive us. Okay, so let's have a look and see where we're at and where we need to go. Forbes magazine back in 2004 said the average lifespan of billionaires in America is 78. And I actually made a CD called What Kills Billionaires. We sell a lot of those because people want to know, gosh, if billionaires are being killed by something, we need to know so we can at least avoid that. Seven years later... In March of 2011, they redid the study and said, oh, billionaires are, average lifespan is only 66. They lost 12 years of average lifespan in seven years. And that's because they hired the top personal trainers from the professional athletes. Bam, they were dead. <laughs> they were the most expensive laboratory animals ever. The average lifespan of professional athletes is 62, except for football players is 51. I used to be able to say there's never been a professional athlete ever lived to be 100, but there's one little old guy from the, from, um, the Philadelphia, whatever, the baseball players, uh, back uh, 100 years ago. He just died at age 100 plus three days. So with the exception of that guy, there's never been a professional athlete ever lived to be 100. That tells you there's a problem, right? And so there's thousands of failed medical theories every century, and the 20th century and 21st century are no different. The two big ones, of course, is genetics. That's a failed theory. We know that genes do control your hair color, your eye color, your skin color, whether you're being a boy or girl. 
Your genes control your liver, your heart, your muscles, your bones. If, if you need to make new bones, your, your bones will make bone cells. And if you need to make a new liver, your liver will make the liver cells, all because of genetics. But it was an overreach by them to say all these diseases are caused by genetics. There's not a single disease that's transmitted by genetics. Of course, that's why the book Epigenetics is a bestseller at Amazon.com. Oh, very proud of that. hoo -ah. Okay, here we go. Let's go to the next one. Disability prevalence says the darker states are the ones that have the worst records. So you can look at the Great Lakes states, you can look at the southeast, you can look at Nevada and uh, New Mexico, and even Texas is not really good. Okay, California is not really good. You'll see in a moment. Let me back up there. Get back up. Oh, there we go. Okay, different types of this one I want. Okay. Now, I wonder what Steve Jobs' mom and dad thought when they buried him at age 56. I wonder what Satoru Iwata's parents thought about when they buried him at age 55. I wonder what Vice President Joe Biden felt like when he buried his son, Bo, at age 46. I wonder what the king of Dubai felt like when he buried his son, who was supposed to be the king when the king died, Sheikh Rashid died at age 33 of a cardiomyopathy heart attack, a deficiency of a single mineral while he was running. You can look at him, no, he was a fitness buff. I wonder what past president Jimmy Carter felt like when he buried his grandson, Jeremy, at age 28 from cardiomyopathy heart attack. You see, it doesn't matter how politically connected you are, it doesn't matter how rich you are, if you don't have the 90 essential nutrients, you are doomed to a life of misery and early death. Hooah! Yeah. Pastor Rick Warren, very famous pastor, wrote a, a best-selling book. It's probably still a bestseller. I mean, it was a, one of the longest-running bestsellers. Uh, a purpose-driven life saved many families. It, it helped so many people who were drifting in their lives. And his own son committed suicide at age 27. Now, they never listed why. There was no, they never mentioned a note or anything like that. But if you think about it, you will come up with why he committed suicide. Female life expectancy in America, this was 1990, Harvard Medical School, said that uh, in the, the counties, this is county by county, the red, orange, and yellow counties are the shortest lived, and the, the counties in the dark blue are the longest lived. There's a 25-year difference. Everybody in the southeast, the old Confederate states, and out kind of southwest in the Indian Reservation, up in the Dakotas and Montana, they fry everything and don't take the 90. Males are the same way, same pattern. These are the four books you're going to need to add 25 to 50 healthy years to the life of your kids, yourself, and everybody you love. Black Gene Lies, the information is good for white folks too. Epigenetics, the death of the genetic theory of disease transmission. Immortality, look at the top 20 longevity cultures on earth. What fascinates me is that all top 20 longevity cultures according to the National Geographic, not me, our third world cultures have no doctors, no insurance, government or, or private, absolutely no emergency services, no hospital, no clinics, yet they have 40 times 100 year olds we do. They have 100 year old per 250 their population, we Americans only have one per 10,000. They have no amenities, no utilities, no roads, no cars. They live on a calorie-restricted diet, not because they know the science, they're just so poor they can only afford 600 to 900 calories a day. Americans take in 2,500 to 4,000 calories a day. Rare has been cures was the first place that a study was done on epigenetics. You'll see that in a moment. Some of us are going to go fast through it so you can read the books and listen to the CDs. I don't know, I'm not getting a response here. Can you advance that one for me? It doesn't want to go. Hello. There we go. This baby will live to be 120. This baby could live to be 142. That's because they're doing it in those countries.
I'm just letting you read the headlines here. These are the longest lived people on earth, the Huns in the Hunza Valley and the Karakuru Mountains separating out Pakistan, northern Pakistan from China. They literally live in the biblical land flowing with milk and honey. The Giltar Glacier, the water comes out from underneath it looks like milk and it's because of all the minerals in the water. And there's, pe uh, there's more species of bees, more wild honey around the Giltar Glacier than any place else in the world because bees like minerals. The land flowing with milk and honey, honey they live at 13,000 foot elevation. You can see their third world culture. They don't have any doctors or insurance or hospitals or clinics, emergency services, yet they're the longest of people on earth. Okinawa, everybody in Okinawa doesn't live to be a, an old person. Most of them live to be 52. They have 10 different fried chicken places on every block. One little valley in Okinawa, the people live to be an average about 85. This is one of the oldest fellows there, Mr. Taguchi, and spent a lot of time with him, so we know exactly what they do and what they don't do. I don't know how she got in there. 112. Come on, come on. We need some help here. Advance. 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 Anybody help me here? There we go. Now, this is the lady I want to go dancing with. She's 97 years old. She's the lead singer in a pop group from Okinawa, Haru Yamashiro. Look at her energy at 97. You got to love her. Now, this just came out in January of this year. It's claimed that this lady here, Mama Esafiho, uh, is 191 years old in the Delta State from Nigeria, and we've requested some um, information to um, uh, confirm why they came up with that. This is confirmed and well-documented. Li Ching Yun lived to be 256 years of age, born in 1677, died May 6, 1933. His entire obituary in the New York Times is in the book Rare Earths Been Cures. It tells the story because it's about rare earths. Our bodies need 90 essential nutrients. Hua! Hua! 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, 3 fatty acids, and our genes, our DNA, and our RNA, and our telomeres, little end caps in our chromosome, are the part of our body that needs these nutrients. The medical doctors thinking stopped at eat the seven food group pyramid that was too exper you know, it was too um, complicated for them, so they broke it down to the four food groups. That was too complicated for them. Now they say just eat four colors. <laughs> but if you want to maximize your genetic potential for health and longevity and fending off disease and intelligence and speed and strength and doing all the things you have the capacity to do, maximize your genetic potential. You need 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, 3 fatty acids, every second of every minute of every hour of every day of every week of every month of every year, Forever. How long do you need water for life? How long do you need oxygen for life? How long do you need the 90 for life for life? Yeah. Hooah. 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 Now, Evander Holyfield, we rebuilt him after he had his heart attack. He came back and boxed for eight more years, even with a piece of his ear bitten off. <laughs> Danny Glover, uh, he was um, uh, laid back and not doing any more uh, of his um, uh, movies that were high capacity, you know, we're doing all these jumping out of cars and beating each other up and stuff uh, because he had a back and hip problem. We rebuilt him and now he's back doing these movies again. Pat Boone, you know, ladies, April love, remember that? <laughs> he was reduced to selling walk-in bathtubs on TV so he could pay his mortgage. Now he's back on the road again doing tours and he is having the time of his life because of the 90 for Life program. Willie Nelson had claw hands 12 years old. He couldn't, couldn't play the guitar anymore. Now he's on the road again. Whoa! And our own Drew Pearson, right, caught the Hail Mary packs from Roger Staubach, helped Dallas Cowboys win the Super Bowl in the last seconds. And he's with us, a, a great mentor of all of us, a great example, and we just love him to pieces. And thank you, Drew. Whoa! Now, this was the first study ever done. This was the first scientific study ever done in epigenetics. This is in that book, Rare Earths Been Cures. And this is one that I did in St. Louis. Uh, Perkins was given a hydroponics machine to grow um, wheatgrass and stuff like that and barley grass. And he said, um, well, like, I just can't give this to the animals in the zoo. They might die. So you need to test it and make sure everything's okay. So to make a long story short, we got 100 fertile duck eggs from the same pair 
of mallard ducks. Mama and Daddy the same. We kept stealing them until she laid 125. We got 100 of them, four groups of 25. Group number one, we gave iceberg lettuce to. You see how big it is? Group number two, hydroponically grown barley grass. It was about 20% bigger. Look at the difference in the size of the head and the length of the body and, and the size of the pelvis. And then the duck pelts from Ralston Prina, he's twice as big as the other two groups. But look at baby Huey, number four. You got the hydroponically grown barley grass and the duck pellets from Rolls and Prina. Which one got the 90 essential nutrients that maximize our genetic potential? Group number four, the Huey group. Same genetics. The only difference in genetics was some were boys, some were girls. And people had talked about outside influences affecting how our genes work, but this was the first experiment that had ever been done and published. Very, very proud of that. hoo -ah. And the study I did with Perkins and the, and the Washington University in St. Louis Zoo and the Shaw's Botanical Gardens, over 20,000 autopsies, 10 million chemistries, 10 million slime special stains. We eliminated 900 different diseases in the zoo animals. We tripled their lifespans, eliminated every birth defect you can name and 10 times as many you can. And that's what got me excited because if you can have a crocodile with type 2 diabetes and a hummingbird and a deer with sickle cell anemia, which are supposed to be genetic diseases of humans, how did they get them, right? So it had to be that these were nutritional deficiencies of any vertebrate. All vertebrates get the same nutritional deficiency, get the same disease. And we've been doing this in longevity now for 38 years, and guess what? It works. And now we're going to take it to the world. We're going to save our kids. God bless you. Okay, how, many, how much time do I have? 10, 15 minutes left? Okay. Okay. Okay, I just need to know how fast to go. Okay, now, <laughs> um, five, six, seven thousand years ago, pharaohs and kings and generals and successful businessmen paid grave robbers bags of gold, maybe worth millions of dollars today, bags of gold and silver, to bring them mummies. And they would grind up the mummies into what they called mummy dust. And the mummy dust, they used like condiments. They'd sprinkle it on their food like salt and pepper because of the longevity factor of being a mummy. They're supposed to live in the afterworld forever, and that's why they killed all their soldiers and their favorite horses and their 400 wives and all that kind of stuff, and, and uh, so they could take all these people they loved with them, right? So the average person, uh, slaves couldn't afford mummy dust, so how did they get their minerals? Well, this article here in Scientific American said people began to, began to get smarter, they were more creative, they live longer as, as soon as they began to eat cooked food. That's absolutely positively not true. It was because they cooked the food, not because they ate the cooked food. Because what was the universal fuel 5,000 years ago? Wood. And the consequences of burning wood for fuel, whether it's for cooking or heating water or light, whatever it was, was it had ashes. Now, the wood ashes are not really ashes. 95 to 98% of that powder, that volume of powder that comes from burning wood, are really the minerals that the trees sucked up out of the ground.